white beaches, warm turquoise waters, and lush forests crown an underwater kaleidoscope of spectacular coral reefs and abundant marine life. This is the Caribbean, a seductive blend of natural beauty and rich cultures under a hot sun. But all is not well in paradise. The Caribbean community with its 15 member states and less than 20 million inhabitants are in a state of increased vulnerability due to climate change. Recent years have seen an increase in stronger storms and hurricanes that threaten lives and property, flood non-traditional areas, destroy crops, and cause infrastructural damage across the region. Warmer air and sea temperatures along with rising sea levels are negatively impacting corals and causing both marine and terrestrial ecosystems to deteriorate. Changing weather patterns are also leading to more droughts, which challenge already limited water resources for island nations that depend heavily on tourism and agriculture for their survival. For the Caribbean community, Every fraction of a degree of further global warming multiplies the massive problems already undermining our sustainable development efforts and threatening our physical survival. Well, as far back as 1994, climate change was identified by small island development states and the low-lying coastal states in the Caribbean as a major environmental threat. A few years after, 1997, we started our first activity addressing climate change, trying to understand what it is, uh, how it will affect the Caribbean, and what actions we have to take if we are going to avoid the impacts that we foresee. The first phase of adaptation is called building capacity in the region to combat climate change. It began in 1997 with a regional project called Caribbean Planning for Adaptation to Climate Change, which lasted until 2001. Following this was the Adaptation to Climate Change in the Caribbean project that lasted from 2001 to 2004. These two projects really laid the groundwork for a regional understanding as to the seriousness the region would face as a result of climate change. CPAC took us to the point where we understood that as a region, we are already vulnerable to climate, hurricanes, landslides, floods, drought, and that climate change would exacerbate these conditions. It will make these worse. So that we had to start to see how we deal with these impacts. Uh, on water and agriculture, etc. One of the significant things that came out of the ACCC project was the establishment of a regional climate change center. The reason being, we understood then that climate change is going to be with us for a very long time and that to address it effectively, we needed to have a regional mechanism to support country efforts to deal with climate change. That regional mechanism is a climate change center. The mainstreaming adaptation to climate change project was initiated in 2004 to do just that. Mainstream adaptation strategies into the sustainable development agendas of the small island and low-lying coastal states of CARICOM. Between 2004 and 2009, Global climate models were downscaled to help the region understand the projected climate into the 21st century. A strong public education and outreach program and a comprehensive communication strategy to include stakeholders in Caribbean media was implemented. And a manual was developed to conduct vulnerability assessment and the outputs used to prepare adaptation strategies and develop policies. Under the MAC project, Four strategies were developed, two for water, one in Jamaica and one in Belize, one in tourism for Barbados, and one in agriculture for Guyana. Emerging out of those was the need to cost what adaptation would mean. 
So part of what we have been doing at the center as well is not just looking at what will work, but looking at what is most cost effective. Because as we're always aware, governments have limited budgets. They have resource constraints. And therefore, we want to ensure that we're providing them with adequate advice based on our analysis in where we think the monies should be channeled. To complement the information generated by the climate models, a regional network of stations for the collection, analysis, and dissemination of hydrometeorological and sea level data relevant to the observation of climate change was established. The data from these stations were used to do analysis of climate change related impacts on potentially vulnerable sectors of the region's economies, such as water, agriculture, health, and tourism. One of the main areas in which climate change remains a threat is that all the models are showing, for example, that we would have more extreme weather events, but also more importantly, more intense, but less rainfall, even though that may sound somewhat contradictory. With reduced rainfall, the likelihood is you're having less water available to carry out certain kinds of activities such as agriculture, the tourism sector, and even in terms of health, in terms of the fact we depend upon adequate water supply and the quality of the water. The region already imports, and I'm speaking here of the Caribbean region, some four billion in agricultural products. To the extent that climate change is impacting the water supply and also our crops, the likelihood is commodity prices will go up. We can see that food import bill increasing and therefore the cost of living, the people who have to purchase these food items also increasing. So you're taking a larger proportion of your budget and spending it on food, making less monies available for other types of activities. So that's one direct impact. Another area that we are particularly concerned about is that the region is a heavily natural resource based region. And I say that meaning that we depend a lot on tourism. Therefore, to the extent that we are seeing sea level rise or more extreme events like tropical cyclones, not only would our infrastructure be impacted since most of these are along coastal areas, but also what we are likely to see is that the livelihoods of people being impacted. Our tours, our tour guides, we are speaking about the people who are into your artisanal industry, those who are doing their little crafts, etc. Because they are depending on tourists coming. And if the number of tourists is being reduced because your corals are being destroyed or your infrastructure is not in place, then there again we find that their livelihoods are being negatively impacted or they have to find alternatives. So the basic tenet or the basic message we want to get out is that climate change is not just a science. It will not just be an issue for the scientists to look at. It's an issue that will affect lives, livelihoods, income, the way we live. So in all of us should have a stake in it and should be responding to it. Phase two actions undertaken by the Caribbean community is called implementation of pilot adaptation measures. The Special Program on Adaptation to Climate Change, SPAC, falls within this sphere. As part of the Caribbean Community Adaptation Program, the Center initiated five adaptation projects dealing with various aspects of adaptation. One of these is in the island of Bekwe, in the Grenadines, in the Eastern Caribbean. The community faced very serious water problems, especially during the dry season. The Beckwe project supports the use of a seawater reverse osmosis plant, powered by a photovoltaic system set up to help to support the provision of fresh water to the Beckwe community. This system is very energy intensive and would have required extensive use of fossil fuel. Instead, we integrated within the system a renewable energy program using photovoltaics to produce the energy. 
But what is important here is that the system was grid connected. As a result, we are producing energy that drives the saltwater reverse osmosis system. It has several benefits. One, it replaced the fossil fuel that would be needed. It also reduced the amount of foreign exchange that would have been needed to import the fossil fuel. It helped the community in having a continuous source of fresh water, which also helped in terms of the health issues. The Viewfort Rainwater Harvesting Project on the island of St. Lucia is another project designed to enhance efficient use of available water supplies and increase resilience to water scarcity conditions. St. Lucia has at many times been faced with limited water resources for several reasons. The southern part of St. Lucia is continually threatened by droughts. The tourist trade requires a lot of water to service its guests. And effluent coming from the big hotel chains is entering groundwater sources and also destroying vital coastal marine resources. This was the first private sector, public sector initiated pilot project to address the issues of climate change. The hotel chain jointly with the center through a Jeff project were able to put together or reduce the amount of water needed from the water system used by the hotel by some 25 percent which then became available to the community but more importantly the wastewater was treated and as a result Apart from harvesting the rainwater, the grey water was processed and used for the irrigation of the golf courses, the lawns, and so on. So as a result, a number of benefits accrued. One, the community of Viewfort now has excess water in terms of 25% increase. Secondly, the marine coastal areas no longer receive the waste from the marine wastewater which has now been processed using the processing system. And thirdly, the watershed is also being protected. And one final benefit, it showed that the government was able to put in place policies that would require all hotels to have a rainwater harvesting system and the processing of grey water. Both the Beckwe and Beaufort projects are replicable and can be repeated around the Caribbean. Similar systems are currently being considered for replication in other islands, in the Eastern Caribbean, the Bahamas, and Belize. Most Caribbean community economies are based on tourism, thus making the sustainability of this sector one of vital importance to the Caribbean. A pilot study on how to transform the tourism industry in the Caribbean to a low-carbon economic sector, the Caribbean Carbon Neutral Tourism Program is currently being implemented by the Center. We are trying to make the Caribbean region what they call a carbon neutral destination. In other words, getting people to convert more from fossil fuel to more renewable energy, to convert more from the kind of switches we currently utilize. Every time a tropical cyclone goes through the Gulf Coast and it seems like it will threaten the rigs that are on that coast, we see a slight spike in oil prices. It therefore means that our products are going to be less competitive because to the extent that energy prices keep going up and that's what we're using, then we have an increase in the cost of production. The tourism sector therefore we feel that is one area we can make a change. And so with this carbon neutral project, the center is working with some pilot countries to convert from the fossil to more renewable energy and the whole way in which we treat with the energy sector. So for example, it's not just about conversion, it's also about better or more energy efficiency. The Caribbean community has made significant strides to address climate change in the region. In July of 2009, the heads of government of the Caribbean community endorsed the Lillendale Declaration on Climate Change and Development. 
which defines the national and international political positions on climate change of the CARICOM member states. Also in 2009, the heads of government approved a regional framework for achieving development resilient to climate change, prepared by the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, which articulates the strategic direction for the region's response to climate change risks and provides a roadmap for action over the period 2009 to 2015. The center was further mandated by the heads to prepare an implementation plan to deliver the actions envisaged within the framework. The implementation plan covers the period 2011 to 2021 and targets several key priority challenges and actions. Building low-carbon climate resilient economies in the region. Development of a risk management ethic in decision making. Improved financial, technical, and human resource capacity, including improved access to climate change funding mechanisms. Building effective partnerships with national, regional, and international stakeholders. Expanding the region's understanding of and the application of climate science through building on available information, knowledge, and expertise. Working collectively through a regional support structure such as CARICOM and strengthening the Caribbean's international negotiating position and its long-term capacity to plan. The transformational change is required to build resilience to a change in climate and to deliver the strategic elements and goals in the regional framework requires that the Caribbean government change their processes of planning and policy development. The implementation plan acknowledges that there needs to be a transformational change in mindsets, in planning, in processing, and in delivery of goods and services within the region. In order to achieve this, the implementation plan has adopted what is called the three ones approach. This requires one central plan at the regional level and one at the national level, one coordinating mechanism for resource mobilization, and one monitoring and evaluation mechanism at the national and regional levels. This will ensure the best and most efficient use of resources and deliver value for money to the Caribbean. All the studies and work in climate change undertaken by the Caribbean community indicate the need for concrete action now, not tomorrow. Successful adaptation, however, needs resources, tools and commitment through the support and collaboration of partners in the developed countries, especially in the transfer of technology that can help us address these issues as they relate to our development and survival. But we will not wait. Climate change must be addressed now and therefore our adaptation efforts will continue as we have done over the past 15 years.